Today, I've got a really fun problem from TVO's problem solving booklet. This is designed for students who are looking to prepare for their Oxford and Cambridge mathematics interviews. I know some of you have your Oxford interviews this week. Some of my students certainly do. So best of luck if you're one of them. We want to determine m, an integer, so that the equation x to the 4 minus 3m plus 2x squared plus m squared equals 0 has four real solutions for x that form an arithmetic progression. OK, an interesting one, and I encourage you to try and solve this um, equation or solve this problem, sorry. I'm going to dive into a solution here. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that this, although it is a quartic in terms of x, it's essentially a hidden quadratic because I've got x to the 4 here um, and x squared here. So if I replaced like x squared with some letter u, this would just then become a quadratic in u, which maybe is, is quite nice to deal with. But what that does tell me is that if I do have, let's say, a positive real root of this, let's say x equals 3 is a real root, then that kind of for free tells me that x equals minus 3 is also a real root of this equation. And so now I have an interesting scenario where um, if I have a root, then I kind of get another one for free. And another observation that I'll make is zero is not a root of this uh, quadratic, because if x equals zero is a solution, um, then that must mean that m squared is zero, which means m is zero. But then that means that you have x to the four minus two x squared equals zero. But this equation has x equals zero as a repeated root. So it kind of only leaves room for two more potential roots, which would only give you three real solutions. But we're told that we have four. Great. So x equals zero isn't a solution. And so therefore, we know that the solutions to this equation are going to come in nice pairs. So plus or minus a number. So we're going to say let alpha be positive, be the smallest uh, positive root of this equation. Now, of course, we know plus and minus alpha are going to be roots to this equation. Now, what's the difference between plus and minus alpha? Well, it's 2 alpha. And so therefore, we know our other roots must be plus or minus 3 alpha. And there are our four solutions. How do I know it's 3 alpha? Well, they've got to form an arithmetic progression. So I'm going to have in order minus 3 alpha, minus alpha, alpha, and 3 alpha being the roots of my quartic equation. OK, lovely. Now, of course, alpha, I don't know yet. It's just some positive number, which I perhaps may want to work out. But it turns out that we don't actually need to. Now, how does this factorize? Well, this is going to factorize as x plus 3 alpha, x plus alpha times x minus alpha times x minus 3 alpha. And if I group those two terms together and those two terms together, that's x squared minus alpha squared and x squared minus 9 alpha squared. And if I just expand this, this gives me x to the 4 minus 10 alpha squared x squared plus 9 alpha to the 4. But this expression here is supposed to be identical to this expression here on the left. And so we can make two essentially simultaneous equations here. We get 10 alpha squared is equal to 3m plus 2. And we get that 9 alpha to the 4 equals m squared. OK, amazing. And we have two equations here, two unknowns, but we're not really interested in alpha, we're more interested in m. So um, let's maybe square the first equation to give us 100 alpha to the 4 equals uh, 9m squared plus 12m plus 4. And then maybe just divide this and this together to give us 100 over 9, because the alpha to the 4s cancel, equals 9m squared plus 12m plus 4, all over... Uh, m squared. And so if I rearrange this, like cross multiply, I bring everything to one side, I get 81 m squared minus 108, I'm sorry, not 81 m squared, 19 m squared minus 108 m minus 36 equals zero. This is not a particularly pleasant quadratic. You can solve it though. You get two solutions for m, m equals six and m equals minus six over 19. And of course, we're looking for m to be an integer. So m equals 6 will be our answer. I guess in theory, we should probably still check that this does indeed work. Um, so let's work out what alpha would have to be. And uh, so we can just sub that into here. So we get uh, 9 alpha to the 4 equals 36. And so that means that alpha must be root 2 in order for this to work, because alpha is positive. And so this all makes sense. Um, so alpha is root 2. Um, 
two, three alpha is three root two and so on. And that would solve our problem. So m equals six is our only solution to this. A really interesting solution. And what I quite like about this problem is the fact that it's probably easy to get quite intimidated by it or maybe try a bunch of things or not really have an idea where to go. And that's where the interviewers will come to your aid and they'll maybe give you some hints, some things to consider. Um, but hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you do have your Oxford interviews, as I say, best of luck. Um, and I've made a bunch of videos going through problems from TBO's Problem Solving Book Club. So check those out if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.